Hello everyone, my name is Michael from Polygon Island, and today I'm going to be explaining render passes. What are they and how do they work? So, render passes, what they are are basically, um, they are different images that only show a certain part of the render. So either the base color, um, any kind of volume, the glossiness itself of a render. They're basically the different properties of the render in different images. Now these are useful because um, you can combine them. You can uh, use compositing and kind of put them together. Um, and they help if you don't want to re-render an entire image. Let's say um, you just need to uh, render the glossy or you need to render um, transmission out by itself. This is really handy to do that with. So, um, um, the most common way uh, that I would do this, the pretty much the way that I would use render passes, is let's say I have a very heavy scene with volumetrics or I need mist. Um, instead of rendering the scene with the volumetrics with it, um, which would take a lot longer than rendering a scene without volumetrics, I could render the scene without volumetrics, then use a mist or volume pass, and then just render out the volume by itself, which is a lot easier on your system because instead of rendering both at the same time, it's only rendering the volume or it's only rendering the scene and then you can overlay the volume in the compositing settings. So I have this very basic scene set up right here. Um, we can see that in the scene we have a transparent background. We have a single point light coming on a uh, red sphere with roughness at 100, a dark gray sphere with a low roughness, so we have that like kind of glossy reflective look, and then a glass object or a transmission object with just a plane with a uh, really high roughness right here as our floor. So. Um, if I just hit Control alt 0 on my keyboard to just kind of put my camera right here, I'm going to go ahead and pull back the focal length. So we just kind of have this little setup right here. Very simple. It's just for tutorial purposes. Um, our menu for render passes, where we can actually select our different render passes and such, is right here. It's these little, these little three image layers right here, right above the cone and sphere. If we click that, we can see this little passes drop down. It should automatically be dropped down, but if it's not, you can just click this little triangle right here, and it'll drop it down. And then you can see our data. Uh, you can uh, include uh, different d uh, render data. Um, combined is just all of them combined. And then you have your normal data, mist, vectors, UVs, denoising data, uh, different indexes and stuff. We're not going to be worrying about these right now. We're going to be worrying about our light passes. So with our light passes, we can see we have direct, indirect, and color on diffuse. Uh, direct, indirect, and color pretty much on all these. Now, what do what does all this mean? So we have a few subcategories right here. We have diffuse, glossy, transmission, volume, and other. So diffuse is basically your just your raw lighting data for the scene. Your raw color, your raw lighting, no kind of shadows, no reflections, nothing like that. So, uh, diffuse direct is any kind of direct light that is coming onto the scene, um, any kind of direct lighting data that is being cast upon the objects. Uh, diffuse indirect is kind of your bounce lighting, like any object that's bouncing off of other objects. And then color is your raw color data. It doesn't have any lighting data, it's just your color. Now, glossy is basically the same thing. Direct is any kind of direct um, reflections that's coming off the object. Indirect is any kind of bounce reflections, any kind of reflections that are bouncing off of other object. And color is your color for your reflections. Transmission, uh, transmission indirect and direct is basically the same thing as glossy, but it's any kind of transparent objects. Anything in your uh, scene that's transparent, like glass, translucent ma materials, alpha materials, <coughs> stuff like that. Um, volume is obviously your volumes, any kind of volumetrics you have in your scene. Um, you just have direct and indirect uh, with that. You don't have any color because volume doesn't really have any color data per se. Um, and then you have your other. You have any kind of emission passes, any kind of objects that produce light, any kind of objects that just give emission. Like if you have a sphere that has an emission shader that's producing light onto the scene, that's what that is. Environment. Environment is any kind of background images that you have, HDRIs, stuff like that. Shadow and ambient occlusion are just the shadow data for the scene. Um, like any kind of shadows like down here that you see. Um, and that's what that is. 
Now, a really handy feature that you have in Blender, um, in the newer versions of Blender, is you can actually preview these passes in your render uh, viewport. So you don't have to render them all out just to see what they look like. So the way uh, we can view those is if we go up to the top left right here, um, you have all these little spheres right here. These are your different render views. But if you click on this little drop down arrow, you can see we have this little um, thing at the bottom that says render pass. Right now it's set combined because it's combining all the render passes together to get your render. If we click on this, we can see that we have um, general and then we have our light, which is pretty much all we went over right here. So if we look at diffuse direct, we can see that we just basically have our just our light um, and our light you can see it's hitting right here it's hitting right here and there's nothing really hitting right here because this is a transmission pass it's transparent but you can basically see where the light is hitting in the scene and on where or how the light is reacting to the objects without any kind of um, reflections or such now if we go back to this and we click diffuse indirect, we can see our light bounces. We can see where light is bouncing off. So if you recall, this first sphere right here was red. Um, so it is reflecting and bouncing light off of that red sphere onto our white plane, which makes it look like the plane has red light right here. That's how light works, like bounces off of different objects. So it is reflecting light right here. And right here, um, this middle sphere was a dark gray. Um, since it was a dark color, it wasn't really any kind of vi bright, vibrant color. It's not really reflecting much light because it's dark. It's absorbing a lot more color. So you can see under it, there's not a visible color, really. It's just gray. It's dark. Uh, and then we can see under our transmission object, our clear glass object, you can see that uh, the light is bouncing through it. So you can see the light coming through over here and then it's slightly below it, even though it's more fused out below it, uh, the light is still bouncing off of this transmission object onto different parts of the scene. So if we go back to it once again, we can see um, our diffuse color. So this is our raw color of the scene without any kind of lights or any kind of shadows. You can clearly see the first sphere is red, second sphere is dark gray, and then the third sphere is black because once again it's transparent. It doesn't have a color. It's just reflecting a bunch of colors. If we go back to it now, uh, we can go to our Glossy Direct. Um, this is showing our gloss for the scene. So you can see the first one is a 100% roughness or a roughness value of 1. So it's not producing any gloss. It is completely rough. The second one, we can see that we have our gloss um, coming off it. We can see exactly what it's reflecting. Uh, we see we have that one spot right there where the light is... Uh, the most focused and then it kind of scatters throughout and then we have a little Fresnel effect over on the I guess horizon of the sphere I don't know what that's called the rim of the sphere I guess we have that little Fresnel effect where light is looping around the sphere and then obviously our transmission material it looks kind of weird I don't really know how to describe this but it's basically the entire thing is glossy so it's kind of reflecting off of that and we can see the bottom is black because light is not hitting it because it is being blocked by the sphere uh, in front of it and so that's that and so if we go to our glossy indirect we can see uh, our bounce glossy. So these are kind of inverted. So we can see on our se on our first sphere, it's still 100% roughness. It's still doing that. Um, but the interesting thing here is our plane. We can see our plane is reflecting that red light again. Because our plane still has a tiny bit of gloss on it. Um, so it is reflecting that red light as a gloss pass. Then we can see on our second sphere, the... Um, regular material that's not transparent but it's still glossy we can see we have the bounce gloss coming up from the bottom now because it's not being hit directly from the top and we can see that it's reflecting that red sphere right here uh, then our transmission we can see that the bounce gloss coming from here and here is going to the bottom of that um, it's bouncing off it onto the plane and back onto the sphere um, and then if we go to our glossy color we can see here <coughs> Excuse me. We can see here that these two, um, they don't really have any kind of um, gloss color. But then this one right here, it has that dark gray color because it's reacting with the light around it. And the world color right now, um, if I didn't have transparency on, would be gray. So it's um, reflecting that gray color all throughout uh, the scene. That's what color that is. Um, next, if we go to Transmission Direct, um, all of these are... <clears throat> all of these are black. Um, this is black 
because there's really no nothing to really reflect right here. It's transparent. It's black. Um, it's just transparent. Transmission indirect, we can see now that this uh, third sphere is the only object in the scene that's currently transparent, and we can see that is now showing as a transparent object in the pass. Now if we go to transparent color, uh, we can see that it's reflecting white because it's transparent. It's just, it's really hard to describe transparent objects in color um, because they don't really have a color. They're transparent. So it just kind of defines that as white right now. Um, if I were to change the color of this, um, like the default color for the transparent object is white. Um, that's the tint of the glass. But if we change the color through here, we can see that it is changing the color in the transmission color because now we're changing the color of that transmissive object. Uh, next, what we can go ahead and do is we can go to volume direct and volume indirect. Now, right now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go back to combined right now. Um, I can't really do volume right yet because I don't have a volume object in the scene. But let's say you were to add a volume object in the scene. We can hit Shift A, add a cube, scale it up for our entire scene, and then just give that a volume material. Let's give it a uh, principal volume with a density of 0 0.01. So if we go back now, we can see that there's volume in the scene. There's volume in the air. You can see the volume and stuff. Um, so if we go back into our render passes and go... Uh, to volume direct, we can see that everything is black except for this volume now. This volume is showing and stuff like that. And if we were to go to another, let's say uh, we go to diffuse color, we can see that volume disappears because we're not in the volume pass. So if we go to um, volume indirect, um, there's really no indirect lighting for the volume because it's not bouncing off of anything. So everything in the scene is black because there's nothing to really show there. But yeah, uh, we can also go to our normal data. Um, this shows the normal uh, data of our object. You see these uh, spheres have quads. Um, they're shaped in quads right now. Um, I don't really know a ton about normal data. I just know that it shows the normal data. Um, if you know more about normal data and what it actually means, then this might make sense to you. But for me, it's it doesn't. Um, we can also see our UV data. Uh, this is basically just our UV map. Um, we can see that these spheres are halved. Um, this plane is one face, so it's kind of just a gradient effect right here. Um, and then uh, we can go to our mist pass, and we can see that um, our mist pass is basically our volume. So you can see we have this volume showing right here. It's kind of uh, fading out toward the bottom where it's kind of bouncing off the plane. Um, that's our, that's our mist pass. That's what I was talking about in the beginning of the video, where if you have a volume object, you can render out your volume pass, and then you can render out your um, render object. So, um, what do we do in compositing with this? So, uh, for compositing, all we have to do is just go down here, and we can check whichever, um, whatever kind of, like, uh, render passes we want. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of these, um, all of these except for volume. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and render out this. So if we hit uh, F12, we can see that it starts rendering out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and change my render settings really fast because they're not on the right settings. I'm going to go ahead and... Blender. Hello. There we go. Uh, that's on GPU. That's fine. Uh, performance, I'm going to change to 256 by 256 tiles because that's the best to render on GPU with. I'm going to go ahead and hit F12 again, and I'm going to wait for this to render, and I'll be back once it does. So we can see our objects are rendered now. Um, we have our transmission object, our glossy object, and our rough object. Um, if we go ahead and go to our compositing tab right here, we click Use Nodes. We can see that this might be a little bit different than what you're used to. We have all these different options right here now. So um, if we go ahead and hit Control shift and then click on this if you have Node Wrangler enabled. If you don't have Node Wrangler enabled, I highly recommend enabling it. It makes working with nodes a lot easier. Just go up here to the top left where it says Edit. Go to Preferences. And this window will load in a second. Go to Add-ons and then just type node and then just enable node wrangler. I'm not sure why this window is so big, 
but so I'm just going to shrink it down a little bit and just go to these little three lines at the bottom and then click save preferences and you'll be good. But yeah, control shift click on this render layers right here and you'll get this viewer node. Uh, we're going to go ahead and disconnect this right now because we don't need it. Um, but actually we do need it. Uh, so you can see um, under image, this is connected to our viewer node. This viewer node basically just lets us see. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and fit this in frame by going to view over here on the right and then clicking fit. This kind of just uh, puts it in the frame. We can also scale this down if we want. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just put this right here and just kind of put it in the middle right here. So we can see we have our objects right here. So if we were to just click shadow and then move this into viewer, we can see that we can now view our shadow pass. This just is all the shadows for the scene. Uh, ambient occlusion, we can see that this is our ambient occlusion. We can see down here, um, we have these little shadows right here. Uh, diffuse direct, um, we've already viewed this in our viewport node. It's basically the same thing. Diffuse indirect, if we connect this up, we can see um, it now has that red. Um, this is very noisy because I just rendered it with very low sample counts. And yeah, if you use the noise and stuff, it won't be like that. Uh, diffuse color, it's just our bare color. Glossy direct, we've already viewed all these. Glossy indirect, um, glossy color, uh, transmission direct, transmission indirect, and then transmission color. Um, environments, we don't have anything through here, so it's just gray, it's that gray color. Um, and then noisy image. Uh, I don't really know what that is, to be honest with you. But if we go ahead and connect image back up to this, uh, we can see that we have this here. Uh, now, if, you're notice, if you've noticed, uh, there was a volume object in the scene, uh, but there's no volume here. That's because I left out the volume pass in these. So, um, what we can do from here, let's say we want to have an image with only certain passes. Um... How do we do that? So, um, if we go ahead and hit Shift A and we add a mix node, and then we change this mix to add, and then we just let's say we want our diffuse direct and diffuse color. Let's connect diffuse uh, direct to this first image output, and then diffuse color to our second image output, and then put this image into the viewer node. We can see now that we have a image that just has our diffuse direct and diffuse color. So let's say we want to disconnect. We want to disconnect our diffuse direct. We don't want our diffuse color in there. Instead, we want our glossy direct. If we go ahead and put this in, we can see now we have our diffuse color with our glossy. We can see the glossy on the transmission object and the glossy object. But we don't have any of that shadow that we had with our diffuse direct. Um, and let's say we also want to take this and shift D. And then uh, we also want our transmission. So we can go ahead and put our transmission direct in the second image output with this. And we can see now we have our transmission with this. Uh, we can also continue to layer these. And let's say we want our indirect now. We can put this here and we can see that we now have our uh, transmission direct, indirect, diffuse color, and glossy color. Or glossy direct in here. Um, and then we can also duplicate this once again. And then we can put transmission color in the second one. And we now have our transmission color right here. So... Um, you can also change the factor of these, how much of them you want um, in each. Uh, you can change that if you want to. But yeah, uh, you can keep layering these. Um, let's say we want our shadows now. Uh, we can now add our shadows to these. Um, and we can just continue to do this and fool around with this until you have an image you want. So, um, what do we do with um, volume? So... With volume, what you can do is you can render out another image um, that only has your volume layer. And then what you can do is put that on another render layer. Or you can just render out the image and then combine them in something like Photoshop or an image editing program. Anything like that, really. And then you can just add that on. Um, it's a very easy way to render out volumetric images, uh, more images with volumetrics, without having to wait the substantially longer render times that images with volumetrics have. So hopefully this video helped you out some. Uh, hopefully you learned something about render passes. 
Um, thanks, guys, so much for watching. My name is Michael from Polygon Island, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.